What is going on, YouTube people? Northeast Ohio Cards and Comics here. Does anyone still care about the NBA? Does anyone care about basketball cards anymore? Are we all up in arms with Spider-Man and Joe Burrows and Matt Stafford's and Miles Morales's? What happened to everyone caring about Luca and Ja and Zion and LeBron and Curry and Tatum and this, that, and the other thing? I just, the modern NBA market feels as flat as flat could be. Uh, I was curious, dug in a little bit here on some 30-day numbers, just looking back to basically the first of the year. And I kind of wanted to get this out there prior to the trade deadline. Obviously, some crazy stuff has already happened. The Sabonis deal, the CJ McCollum deal, my Cavs picking up Kar Karis LeVert. Four, I should probably disclose this now. I am recording this Tuesday evening at around 7.30 Eastern time. Uh, to go up Wednesday morning. So if any trades happen overnight, I have yet to see them yet. But I wanted to kind of do this video here and look back 30 days because it puts us just past Christmas. We obviously know the first part of the NBA season, everything came down and kind of resituated itself. But what has things done since the beginning of the year, essentially, until now? And I feel like this is a good line in the sand moment because we're about to have the NBA trade deadline. Football season essentially ends this weekend so what do the next 30 days look like? Do the eyes, does the evil eye of Sauron, as we used to say on the channel, swing back around and all of a sudden care about Luca and Trey and Zion and this, that, and the other thing? Or is it still busy chasing Spider-Man through the city, swinging on some webs? I don't know. I honestly do not know. I just know the NBA, the modern NBA market has been as stagnant as stagnant could be. Stuff's not really going up. Stuff's not really like tanking anymore, at least over the last 30. Once again, don't get me wrong. The first part of this year was definitely a little bit messy on the NBA market, but the last 30 days has just been kind of meh. So that's what we're going to dive and talk about today. Like, comment, subscribe. You guys and girls know the drill. But uh, so where are you at? I am curious, uh, fellow watchers and viewers of the channel. Where are you at with modern basketball with your Lucas, your Josh, your Trace? Are you buying, selling, holding, ignoring? Like, I mean, I know myself personally, other than Garland and a little bit of Sexton, so some sex land, I haven't been doing a ton in the modern NBA market. I really haven't even been, other than a few key cards, I haven't been like super tracking prices on stuff because really nothing's been happening. John Morant's been playing out of his mind. Garland's been playing out of his mind. Luke has been playing extremely well the last month or so. And spoiler alert, the prices really haven't moved that much. So I am curious, do we think trade deadline, you know, shakes the snow globe a little bit, Super Bowl this weekend, do the eyes turn back to modern NBA and do we start to see some movement in the run-up for the playoffs? Now, thinking prices are going to spike just because a team makes a playoffs is a mistake I myself and many others have made. If they make the playoffs and if they make a deep run, you will probably have a nice return on a card, but that's a lot of ifs. Teams heat up and players start getting hot and the eyes go back to NBA as they traditionally do at this time. Do we think card prices pick up or are things just going to kind of remain flat? Let's run through some players and some numbers here. First up, Ja and Zion, two favorites of the channel. Silver Prism, Silver Hollows, both PSA 10, both players on the same chart. Not surprising, Zion has basically been flat. Silver Prism down 13%, Optic Hollow down 3%. Very little movement there, basically because Zion's been in purgatory trying to get better back at the Nike headquarters. Meanwhile, John Morant continues to play exceptionally well. The Grizzlies are one of the funnest teams in the NBA right now. They're getting a lot of Twitter hype. Uh, you know, A lot of the NBA social media machine is behind the Grizzlies right now. His Silver Prism is up 18%. Over the last 30, the interesting thing here, and once again, I did not expect to find this kind of coming into this, his Optic Hollow is down 6%. Even though his Prism Silver is rising, his Optic Hollow is staying flat to slightly trending down, which is a little interesting. Maybe a little bit of a buying opportunity there. Don't know. But nothing here shocks me, I guess, based on what's been going on. I'll be curious to see if Zion gets a bump after the trade deadline today with the Pelicans bringing in CJ McCollum. Are they tipping their hand there a little bit that maybe Zion is closer to coming back than you know they're letting on i don't know but they are clearly want to make a run for the play-in game we will see what happens there does zion cards get a little bump 
off of the CJ acquisition. I'll be curious to look 30 days from now to see if he gets a little buzz. And also, we could get news in there. Hey, he is uh, flying back to New Orleans. He is going to be start practicing with the team would probably cause his cards to bump a little bit. So, you know, there could be other outlying factors there that cause him to bump up. But I will be actually, I'm going to be curious just in the next seven days if he gets a little bump off the CJ trade if we don't get any other Zion news. So, Jaws been playing extremely well. He's up just slightly, 20% increase on a Silver Prism. Nothing crazy. Some of his other more rare color parallels are up a little bit more. In general, Jaw is trending up. Zion is basically flatlined. Next, Luca. Luca's been playing great. Triple double machine, putting up big numbers. The Mavs in general are playing pretty good. I think they're the fourth seed, maybe. Seeding changes like every five minutes in the NBA right now. But this is his Optic Hollow 10 and his Silver 10. Both are basically flat. His Optic Hollow is slightly down at 10%. His Silver Prism is slightly up 6%. Nothing crazy there. That could just be, you know, individual small sale swings on, on any day that kind of moves that one way or the other. To me, that is basically flat. You know, uh, a 5 to 10% swing on a given day is nothing that crazy in the card world. So Luke has essentially been flat, even though he's been playing extremely well lately. He's just not getting as much buzz even though the, the Mavs are even playing pretty good. They've been really well defensively lately. I'll be curious if they could shake things up at the, at the trade deadline. Does he get a bump if they bring in some help? If Goran Dragic gets moved and gets cut, and then he signs with the Mavericks, which has been rumored, does I, you know does Goran Dragic really move the needle at all for them? I don't know. Or do they try to make some other deal? But once again, flat. Really not much going on with Lucas prices. Let's move on down the list. Trey Young. Trey's a little bit of a different story, actually. His Silver Prism over the last 30 is down 28%. So he's been getting beat up a little bit. Optic Hollow up slightly at 7%. His Optic Hollow is a tricky one. It is extremely low population, even compared to Lucas. Trey's Optic Hollow is 166 pop. Lucas is 288. So I don't know if there's something particular about that card that makes it a tougher grade, but they just don't sell quite as often. But his Silver Prism is down 28%. His Silver Prism PSA 10 is down to $800 right now. That is half the price of Ja Morant, how quickly the tables have turned on that one. You know, Ja, what do we just say? Ja's PSA 10 Prism is going for 17, almost 1800 bucks. Trey Young's is at 800, it's less than, or over half. So, you know, that's an interesting one. I don't know if that's necessarily a buying opportunity there. I have a lot of Trey Young already. I probably wouldn't look to buy anymore. But if you're looking to buy on a dip, that's an intriguing one to at least consider if they make a playoff run or something, but they've been struggling a little bit. Maybe they shake things up with the trade deadline. They're probably, actually, the Hawks are probably one of the most disappointing teams of the season so far in regards to what their expectations were in the preseason and what they're doing right now. But Trey stuff is trending down a little bit. Optic Hollow, very low pop. I'm not going to put a lot of stock on that one being basically flat. They just don't move that often. But his Silver Prism down 28%, and he's been playing pretty good. Uh, the team necessarily has him, and they've been very sporadic, but... Trey Young trending slightly down. How about Jason Tatum? Big fan of Jason Tatum. I have a couple of his stuff. Basically no change. Last 30 days, 5% down. This was at around 1000 bucks at $990 uh, at time of recording. Flat. Once again, nothing really changing with that. Once again, the Celtics have been a little Jekyll and Hyde. Some nights they look really good. Some nights they look pretty meh. I believe they've been playing a little bit better lately uh, over the last few but in general, they are probably having a disappointing season as well. I believe they've won seven of the last 10, I think. So they, maybe they are starting to heat up a little bit, but they would be another disappointment team, a lot like the Hawks. I don't think anyone expected the Hawks to be battling for the play-in tournament, though, like I said, they have kind of picked things up a little bit lately. Uh, we'll see if they could keep the momentum going. But Tatum... Completely flat. Once again, do they do something? The Celtics are rumored in a lot of deals. Do they shake something up that maybe gives his stuff a boost? Moving right along, my boy, Darius Garland. Uh, he's been out the last four games with a back injury. That's kind of slowed down his momentum a little bit. They brought in Lavert. I'll be interested to see what this Cavs team looks like on Wednesday night against the Spurs. I'm hoping everyone's back. I would just kind of like to see them full powered and see how Lavert mixes in. But even him, you know, Garland went on a meteoric rise through the first half of the season, first third of the season. Garland's flatlined the last month. He's kind of reestablished himself at his new price. You know, his stuff was dirt cheap or cheap before the season started. He's spiked up, gotten into that $350 range, and has basically sat there over the last 30 days, a minus 4% change. My opinion, that still seems pretty cheap. I am heavily biased. 
heavily biased. Uh, I don't actually even own a, a Garland Silver Prism. I have a PSA 9. I do not own a PSA 10. I have other Garland stuff, but I am extremely biased as a Cavs fan. Uh, the way Garland's been playing, to me, that seems pretty cheap. But what do I know? I am a biased Cavs fan. So take that for what it is worth. Moving right along. Getting into some more not Prism Silver stuff. Let's look at some of the more big boy cards. KD tops Chrome PSA 10. Obviously, he has been hurt. Uh, has the knee injury. He's going to be out still for a little while. The Nets are about as hot of a mess as a hot mess gets. What's his stuff doing? Down 10%. So not a huge hit considering he's been out for pretty much the entire month of January and the Nets have not been playing extremely well with Harden in and out of the lineup, Kyrie not being able to play home games. They are kind of a messy situation and they are rumored in a ton of deals. You know, if I hear one more NBA podcast about Simmons and Harding trading places this week, I'm going to go crazy. All everyone wants to talk about, and I'm kind of sick of it, to be honest. But if they make a move for Simmons and get rid of Harden, does that, I don't know that that impacts Durant's prices. If anything, that probably makes it a little bit harder for them to win this year because you don't know what you're going to get out of Simmons. But KD Tops Chrome, still a pretty iconic card, even in, I know it's a, I know it's an evil base card and no one wants those anymore, but a Tops Chrome base pop 990 on that one, I still wouldn't mind having one at some point in time in my life. KD is one of the best scoring forwards of all time, if not the best scoring forward of all time so i don't know just interesting that his stuff continues i'm actually surprised it only is down 10 percent. that's actually probably pretty good that his stuff has not moved that much considering he's been out with injury that's not always super uncommon how about lebron my boy lebron tops chrome psa 10 this card also basically flat down slightly five percent decrease was 10.5K to start January or early January, currently at 10K even. So a very slight decrease on his stuff. This card keeps playing around that 10K mark. It dips a little bit below and then it shoots right back up again. Uh, it seems to be the current floor. We will see if that holds or not going forward. Uh, he's been in and out of the lineup recently with a knee injury. The Lakers are kind of a messy situation to begin with. They're battling for a play-in spot, as sad as that sounds, I think they'll probably get it just because the teams below them don't really want it. Right now, the Pelicans are the 10th seed in the West at time of recording. The teams below them are the Trailblazers, Cell Mode, Spurs, I don't really know what they're doing. Kings, I have no idea what they're doing with that Tyrese Halliburton deal. Thunder, they don't want to win. Rockets, they don't want to win. So I guess it's the Kings potentially trying to slip in there. Maybe the Spurs. The Kings want to make I, that Kings trade. Boy, oh boy. I have Why they dealt Tyrese Halliburton is beyond me. I'm getting sidetracked. One last one to look at really quick. Steph Curry, PSA 10 tops, 2009. Uh, this card's actually down quite a bit. This is one of the ones monetarily and percentage-wise took the biggest hit. Down 20%, uh, a $3,000 hit over the last 30 days. He has cooled way off. Uh, the Warriors are still a really good NBA basketball team. They have won eight straight. He's playing good, but he is not playing batshit crazy out of his mind like he was the first half of the season. I don't know if that's just because Clay came back and they're incorporating him in, so he's eaten into a little bit of his shots. He doesn't need to go hero mode every night for them to win anymore or what the story is. His shooting has cooled off a little bit as well, uh, but his stuff has cooled back off. So if you were looking to potentially make a play on Curry, you might be able to get in now versus buying at the peak about a month or so ago. He was another one that first third of the season, his stuff just kept going up, 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 and up. He was initially the favorite front runner for MVP. I would be curious if that is still the case. Um, you know, the Suns are the hottest team in the NBA. Uh, they have also, I think they're like nine and one in their last 10, along with the Warriors. Them and the Warriors are going to be an absolutely epic Western Conference showdown, depending on what happens around the trade deadline. But Paul and Booker are playing out of their minds. Their stuff really hasn't changed that much. I didn't include them in on this. Uh, but Booker's stuff is, I think, up ever so slightly. But just in general, you know, I kind of ran through a lot of the big names, a lot of the key players that we talk about a lot with the NBA card market and they're just, it's just as flat as flat could be. I, you know, once again, will money shift over to it once football ends and we kind of get past the Super Bowl and, and, you know, Woj bombs start dropping on, uh, you know, Wednesday and Thursday. We'll see. I may, I don't want to promise anything yet because I'm not hundred percent sure when the trade deadline, I know it's Thursday, but the time 
I assume it's like four or five or six o'clock in the afternoon. I may pop on and live stream after the NBA trade deadline. Like right as the NBA trade deadline ends, maybe I'll pop on and do a live stream, and just do some NBA chit chat and whatever else comes up. So no promises there. I'll look at my schedule uh, and look at the NBA trade deadline schedule, but maybe we'll do that. I, I'm, I would like to live stream one day this week. It's already Tuesday when I'm recording this and I'm not going to do it tonight. So that would leave either Wednesday or Thursday because I can't do Friday. Actually, maybe I could do. Well, no, Friday is Dakota. I don't want to mess up his stuff. So uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll do a little post NBA trade deadline live stream later this week. That is all I have for you, boys and girls. Girls, curious for your thoughts on the NBA market. Like, comment, subscribe. Catch you on the next one. Peace.